In this screencast, I'm going to discuss the method of integrating factors. The method of integrating factors is a method that can be used on um, general first order linear equations like the one I've got here in which I've got a y prime term that has an a of t, some function a of t in front of it, plus a b of t times the y term and an inhomogeneous part g of t on the other side. So let's not go through the general case right away. Instead, let's start with uh, a simple sort of intuitive description and example of how this method works. So I would actually call this, um, this method the backward product rule. So let me write that down, backward product rule. And what I mean by that is we're trying to get the ODE that we're given into a form that makes it look like it's the result of a product rule. And we're going to go backwards as part of our solving the equation. So backward product rule. Um, and so what do I mean by that? Well, let's just write down an equation that's already cooked up in the right form, which won't always be the case, but I'll just give a simple example where we don't have to do half of the work that we'll normally have to do. So I have a t squared plus y prime plus 2ty equal sine of t. So this equation has a special feature that the right hand, the left hand side is of the form, let's see here, um, I'll call a of t t squared in the language of my equation above, b of t is equal to 2t. And then I'm just going to point out that a prime of t is exactly b of t. Okay, And that's an important relationship between these, because when we write that down, we have a y prime plus a prime y equals sine of t. That's what my equation is. <clears throat> and why that's important is that I can always go backwards through a product rule and rewrite this as a times y all prime equal sine of t. And then if I take an antiderivative, I get a times y, and that will be equal to the antiderivative of sine of t, which is minus cosine of t. And now once I go back and remember that a of t is actually t squared, I get t squared y is equal to minus cosine of t. Oh, well, I've forgotten something there. The antiderivative of sine is minus cos of t plus an arbitrary constant. So let me put that arbitrary constant back in. And now we can solve this for y of t. And we get that y of t is equal to minus cosine of t divided by t squared plus c over t squared. And that is the general solution to this equation. The important thing that we want to, I want to point out is that the equation that we started with had a really simple left-hand side that was a result of a product rule. So we're not always going to get perfect cases like that. So let's look at a few other examples. So here's an example that is similar but not exactly the same. I'm going to put down a, an equation ty prime plus 2y equal 1. And I want you to notice here that um, the derivative of t is not 2, it's 1. So we don't have the exact same relationship we had before. The left-hand side is not the result of a product rule, so I can't just take a step backward. So this is not the, the general uh, method of integrating factors, but this is a sort of a special case. Let's just look at this for a little while and think about what could I multiply this equation through by to make the left-hand side a perfect product rule result. I'll let you think about that for a second. So you can hit stop and think about what function you can multiply it through by to make it look exactly like a product rule result. Okay, I'm going to assume that you hit stop and worked on that for a little while and you have an answer. And I will just point out the following. Um, so if I multiply through by t, then I get t squared y prime plus 2ty equal 
t. And you'll notice that the left-hand side of this equation is the same as the left-hand side of the previous one with the sign of t on the right-hand side. But now I've got a t on the right-hand side. So I could just um, do the exact same procedure, which is, uh, you know, go backwards through the product rule and solve for y in the same way. So I'm just going to leave it as an exercise for you to finish because the important thing is figuring out what this um, function is that we're trying to multiply. So I'm actually going to put it down there. So the function that we multiplied through by in this case was just t. So let's do another one. What if I have t squared y prime plus 4 uh, 4ty equal 1 over t. I'll leave you to think about what function can I multiply through here so that the left hand side is a perfect product rule. All right, so I'm trusting that you hit stop and you thought about it and you've come up with an answer. And I'm just gonna point out a general situation here. So I've got a t squared over here and a 4t over here. Now the derivative of t squared is 2t. So I don't have the right coefficient four in front. Well, imagine if I had some t to the n over here, the ideal situation would be if I had n times t to the n minus 1 over here on this on, on next to the y. Now let's say that that's almost what I have. I need to have an n in front of this term if I have a t to the n over here. So I'm stuck with this 4. I can't really do anything with this 4, but I can change the power because the power in these two terms is always going to be different by 1. So if I choose the power of the target power I want is a four, that means that I have to multiply this equation through by t squared. And so if I take my f of t, the thing I'm multiplying through by to be t squared, then I get t to the four y prime plus four t cubed y equal, and then when I multiply by t squared over and then divide by or multiply by one over t, I left with 1t in the numerator. And now you can see that the derivative of t to the 4 is sitting right over here in front of the y term. So I can do an anti-product rule or backwards product rule and continue solving the equation. Okay, so um, let's do a slightly more complicated one where it's not just a polynomial that we need to multiply through by. Let's say we have an equation y prime plus y equals zero. I'll, uh, I'll let you hit stop and think about that one. What function can we multiply through so that we get a perfect product rule result? Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm trusting that you thought this through, did some work on your own. And let me just remind you, if I haven't reminded you recently in one of the other videos that you've been watching, that it's really important for you to engage with the with this material as we're going through it or as, as you're watching the videos. Watching me is um, turning math into a spectator sport, which is not really all that effective. Okay, so uh, let's see what we have to you know uh, do here. So um, I'm gonna multiply by something in front of this term and that same thing is gonna appear exactly here. So basically, I have to answer the question, what can I multiply through so that I have it here and its own derivative here, but its own derivative has to be itself. So what function is its own derivative? Well, the thing I'm gonna multiply through by is e to the t, which is the function that is its own derivative. So I get e to the t y prime plus e to the t y equal zero. And so this, again, is another perfect product rule. It's e to the t times y all prime equals zero, and I can go on and solve that problem. Okay, so let's do even more complicated an example. So we, let's say we have y prime plus cosine of t times y equal zero. And I'm just gonna point out about these last two are uh, homogeneous equations with an equal zero on the right-hand side. 
throughout here, that doesn't really matter so much. What, what matters is that if there's something that isn't zero on that side, can I still do all the steps subsequently? You know, in other words, can I still do all those antiderivatives? And that'll just depend on how ugly a function I put on the right-hand side. So there's nothing special about the equal zero, except it just makes for easy examples to work through. Okay, so um, in this case, we've got something more complicated happening. Uh, in this case, we, we're asking the question, what can I multiply through by here so that I get the derivative of that thing here? And the idea is kind of sitting above in this e to the t example, except if we just put e to the t here, we don't get the derivative of e to the t is just e to the t, not e to the t cosine t. How do we get a cosine t to pop out of e to the t when I take a derivative? Well, we have to put a more complicated function in the power of the e. And the function that we want to put is the antiderivative of cosine. So if I multiply through by e to the sine of t, now you can see that the function in front of the y prime, e to the sine t, has its derivative appearing in front of the y term. In other words, this big one here is the derivative of this function in front of the y prime. And that's going to be a perfect product rule, e to the sine of t y all prime. That's exactly the same thing as the left-hand side above, equals zero, and I can go on with some antiderivatives. For a straight up description of how to use the method of integrating factors, which I haven't quite explained here, I've just explained the idea, um, see one of the other videos that uh, should be posted and you should be able to find either on my YouTube channel or on the course page.